Do you want to know how to earn passive income from stocks that you are mildly bullish on? What if you are a busy individual with no time to actively monitor the markets? Introducing the bull put spread. This is a strategy that requires very little active trading. You just place the trade and let time decay do its work. In this video, I will be covering what it means to sell a put, what a bull put spread is, I will then contrast the bull put spread with a cash secured put. Next, I will run through the three scenarios that may happen during option expiration. I will also share some guidelines for selling puts and show you how to open a bull put spread via Ting or Swim. Also, for those who stay till the end, I will show how to create automatic contingent orders to close your trade at a profit or minimize your losses. By the way, if this is something that will interest you, then please give this video a like and hit the subscribe button as I'm on a mission of uploading option tutorials and breaking it down that even your grandpa can understand. Before I begin, the usual disclaimers, this video is not financial advice. Option trading is very risky, especially if done wrongly. Hence, if you are new to option trading, then my advice is to research first before using real money to trade. Some things to note when selling a put. The put seller has the obligation to buy the underlying stock at a predetermined price on or before the option's expiration date. If you are unclear as to how puts work, then I'll encourage you to watch my beginner video on puts before carrying on with this video and I will link the video on top and down in the descriptions below. So what is the bull put spread? The bull put spread is a neutral to bullish strategy with a defined risk and reward. This means that when placing this spread, you will know beforehand the maximum profit and loss that you can experience. When we open a bull put spread on the stock, we are essentially selling a put with a higher strike and buying a put with a lower strike. Both puts must have the same expiration date. The reason why we buy a put with a lower strike is to ensure that our downside is protected in the event the underlying stock were to tank. If you were to recall, the buyer of the put has the right but not the obligation to sell the underlying stock at the strike price on or before the option's expiration date. Hence, in the event of a get down and we were to be assigned the stock, the bought put will act as our insurance hence limiting our losses. The bull put spread falls under the credit spread category because as the sold put has a higher strike than the bought put, hence we are effectively selling a put that is more expensive and buying a cheaper put as insurance. Therefore, this trade will net us a credit. Thus, the bull put spread is often referred to as a put credit spread. It must be worth mentioning that the bull put spread is a neutral to bullish option trading strategy, hence before placing a bull put spread, we should have a neutral to bullish biasness on a stock as we essentially want the price of a stock to remain above our sold put at the options expiration date. Let us now contrast selling a put versus opening a bull put spread. And we shall use Tesla for this example. Looking at Tesla's chart, we can see that Tesla just closed above its 200 day moving average. In addition, there is some support at the $800 mark. Looking at Tesla's option chain, let's say we wish to sell a put expiring in 64 days time, that will be the 20th of May 2022 option chain. If we were to open it up and sell one put with a strike of $795, the premium that we will get will be $5,165, which is basically $51.65 times 100. Hence, the maximum profit we can achieve from selling that put would be $5,165. The break even would be $745.35, which is essentially calculated by taking the strike, which is $795, minus the credit of $51.65. Assuming we wish to do a cash secured put, which is a safer option, then the amount of capital at risk will be $74,335 and that is basically the break even times 100 shares. Hence, the potential return from this trade will be 6.94%. What if we want to sell a put on Tesla but yet do not wish to commit $74,000 to just one trade? Introducing the bull put spread. Assuming we sell the $795 put and purchase the $790 put, the credit that we will receive will be $170. We get this by multiplying our bid 
which is $1.70 with 100. Hence, the maximum profit we can potentially earn will be $170, which is the credit that we have received. And the break even for this trade will be $793, which is basically $795 minus $1.70. And the maximum that we can lose if the trade turns against us will be $330. This is calculated by taking the difference between the strikes, which in our case is $5 and minus $1.70 and multiply that by 100 and that equals to $330. Therefore, our capital at risk will be $330. In this scenario, the potential return from opening the bull put spread will be $170 divided by $330 and that is a return of 51%. So I bet you guys may be thinking if that would be the case, then why would anyone ever want to sell a cash secured put? Why not just sell bull put spreads? To be honest, I have thought about this a lot as well. And to me, I will sell puts on stocks that I have the intention of holding for a very long period of time. And once I am assigned those stocks, I will then start selling calls against them. This is a strategy known as the option wheel. In fact, I will link my options wheel playlist in the description below for those who are keen. In addition, when I sell a cash secured put and a stock were to drop, all I will experience is a paper loss. However, I will still have ample time to be right should the stock rebound. On the other hand, I would sell bull put spreads when I do not wish to risk too much into just one trade or if I'm not comfortable holding to a stock either because I have no long-term conviction in it or because it's overvalued. In fact, I do find credit spreads to be a very effective strategy especially for people with very small option trading accounts. This is because with a small amount of capital, you can participate in option trades on counters like Tesla, Microsoft, Salesforce and not need to fork out huge amounts of cash to buy calls on. Before I run through the three scenarios that will happen at expiration, do hit the like button as it will greatly help the channel and it also gives me the encouragement for creating more of such content. Scenario number one. Tesla trades above $795 on the options expiration date. This is the ideal situation. Should Tesla trade above $795, both the bought and the sold put will expire worthless and you will keep the full credit of $170. Scenario number two, Tesla trades below $795 but above $790. This is not an ideal situation. In this case, you'll be forced to buy Tesla at $795. However, as the puts that you bought is out of the money, hence you'll be assigned Tesla the following Monday and you can sell it at the market price then. Scenario number three, Tesla tanks and trades below $790. In this scenario, you will experience the maximum loss of $330. As you can see, both scenarios 2 and 3 are totally not ideal. Hence, what I like to do to prevent it from happening is to create a contingent order to close my spreads whenever I earn 50% of the premium or when my sold leg gets touched. I'll share how to create the contingent order towards the end of the video. Here are some guidelines that I follow when selling a bull put spread. Normally, when it comes to spreads, I like selling them where there is a lot of volatility in the market. This is because with high volatility comes higher option premium. And I also like selling puts below strong support. Let's look at the stock ticker symbol CI. You can see there is pretty strong support at $220. Hence, I will not mind selling just below the 200 day moving average. I also like using my screener market club to give me the trend scores of a trade and that will determine how aggressive my trades should be. As you can see, CI or Cigna Corp has a plus 100 score, hence I wouldn't mind taking a more aggressive stance. I have an affiliate link with market club down in the description below where you can experience that screener for just 30 days at $1. I also like selling puts that are very range bound. As we can see in CI, it seems to be caught in a trading range. Hence, if I were to be conservative, I might wait for the stock to retrace before opening the spread 
below the 200 day moving average. Ideally, you also want to sell a put that has 30 to 45 days till expiration as that is when the put contract experiences the most time decay. However, I personally like to sell puts below key support and sometimes I feel that a put with between 45 to 60 days just gives my trade more room to breathe. It will also be a good idea to sell your puts at a strike with around 0.3 to 0.25 delta. This gives the trade a 30 to 25% chance of being in the money and ideally, the strike should be below as many supports as possible. Another thing about selling puts is I like closing my puts early and for that, I will create a contingent order to close my puts when I earn either 50% of the premium or when my sold leg gets touched. The downside to automatically closing your trades when the soap put gets touched is that you experience more losses as compared to not placing a stop loss. However, I personally do not like going through the hassle of experiencing maximum loss or worse, being assigned a stock and have it tank even further. Now let me show you how to place a bull put spread via Ting or Swim. First, I like to look at the overall trend of the market via Market Club. As you can see, Market Club is not giving me very bullish signals. So I think for today, I will adopt a more conservative approach. And I already have decided which ticker symbol I want to do a bull put spread on. And that will be Signal Corp and the ticker symbol will be CI. We can see that Signal Corp has a very strong plus 100 score. So this is Signal Corp's chart and I can see very strong support at the $220 mark. The reason why I'm saying that is because it's a round number and we also have the 200 day moving average just floating slightly above it. There is some support at the $230 mark as well. Okay, so let's go to Think or Swim to look at how much credit we can get. So this is my Think or Swim platform. Let me first put the ticker symbol CI. As we can see, if I were to sell the 6th of May contract, it's a weekly contract and I don't really like selling spreads on weekly contracts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell it on the 20th of May, which has 53 days till expiration. If I want to be aggressive, I can sell the 230 put and buy the 220 put. But I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to sell the 220 and buy the 210. And I'm just going to do one contract. We can see that the credit is $1.25. Let's try to get it at 130. Once you have filled this up, click confirm and send. So we can see that for this trade, my maximum profit will be $130 and my maximum loss is $870. Let's click send. So after waiting for a few minutes, my order finally got filled at a credit of $1.30. Now let's proceed to create an automatic order to close this trade when we earn 50% or when CI drops below $220. And in order to create an order, we first go to our spread, right click it, go to create closing order, select the first option, which is basically buying the spread. You'll notice there's only one spread. We have to go to advanced orders and click one cancel other. Next, go to the current spread, right click it and create a duplicate order. Now we have two orders. The first order will be our take profit order and we will close it when we get a debit of 0.65 which is basically 50% of the premium that we collected. And how do we do that? Firstly, go to the price and edit it and key in 0.65. Next, ensure there is a good to cancel order. Done. For the second order, we have to go all the way to the end, select the gear option and order rules will pop up. Go to price rules, click market, Time in force, ensure it's good to cancel. Next, head down to conditions. For symbols, it'll be CI. The method will be mark. For the trigger, it will be less than or equal to and the threshold will be 220. What this means is that if CI were to drop below $220, then we'll immediately close our spread at market. Once everything is done, click enter and save the order. So now we'll notice that we have our two orders over here. Click confirm and send. Check through your order. Entry is all correct. Once you have checked through, click send. And there you have it. Anyway guys, in my next video, I'll be touching on the bear call spread, which is a neutral to bearish strategy, as well as the iron condor, which is a neutral strategy. So Trevor, what should we do next? I, wa I just want to tell you guys, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and press the like button if you like it, of course. Bye!